Hey guys, I don't want to make this overly dramatic like someone died or anything like that, but I do have terrible news. Um, look, I'm just going to own it, all right? We messed up and we do not have the video for Prof. Uh, we did everything we could. I'm sure you're going to give me your comments about backups and how all that works, and we know, but sometimes uh, shit happens and unfortunately... For this episode, it did. I'm, I know you're bummed. I can't tell you how bummed I am, all right? Not just, this is the first time in 10 years this has ever happened to me. Um, and I'm I'm sorry for uh, Prof. I feel like I wasted his time. And we, we still have the audio, so we're going to put something up. You're still going to be able to listen to this episode um, and hear what he has to say. And I promise we're going to have uh, an episode two. Um, and I already told Prof. I called him like a man, and he was super cool about it, very understanding. I know he's bummed. I can't tell you how bummed I am. So I'm sorry, Prof, uh, Mike, Cody, your whole crew for coming here. Um, and then we botched this, and uh, we've been promoting it. I know this is a big cross promo for all of us, and uh, we got a lot of fans that in common. Uh, and mostly, I'm sorry to you guys. I mean, it is killing me to sit here and do this right now. I'm sorry to you guys. Uh, but I mean, we just honeydew prof, y'all. I wish this was a joke. We just honeydew prof. And I can't say how sorry I am. I genuinely feel embarrassed, ashamed, just disgusted. I'm sorry. Uh, we will figure it out and fix it and make it right. I promise you that. But... You know, we highlight the lowlights. I had to tell y'all. I'm highlighting the lowlights of losing the video for Prof, guys. So, please, give it a listen. Check it out. Throw it some love. I apologize sincerely. I, it's late as shit here at the studio. I don't even want to wake up to the comments tomorrow. So, uh, hey, we get what we get. Um, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And again, I'm sorry. Hey guys, just want to let you know all merch is restocked. We've got the night pants, we got the night pants nation joggers, hoodies, tees, night shorts, all of it is back in stock. Head over to the uh, Honeydew merch store and get your Honeydew gear today. This episode of The Honeydew is brought to you by Upstart, Liquid IV, Ritual, and Magic Spoon. More on that later. Let's get into the do. The Honeydew with Ryan Sickler. Welcome back to The Honeydew, y'all. We're over here doing it in the Night Pan Studios. I'm Ryan Sickler, ryansickler.com, Ryan Sickler on all social media. I want to tell you about tour dates, September 16th through the 18th. I'm in uh, Phoenix at the House of Comedy. Uh, September 30th to October 2nd, I'm in Helium Indy. I'm doing Vegas with Segura, October 8th and 9th. Headlining the Brea Improv on October 28th, all right? More dates coming. Go to ryansickler.com for all tour dates. Sign up to the email list. You'll be on the early side of knowing things, all right? The Honeydew Podcast is the website for the show. And make sure you subscribe to the YouTube. It means nothing to you to hit subscribe. It means everything to us, all right? It's free. It doesn't even hurt you to do it. Subscribe, all right? Patreon, I'm telling you right now, that that show is so damn wild. If you're not subscribed now, it's five bucks a month. It's the honeydew with y'all where I'm highlighting the lowlights with y'all, okay? And you know the crazy shit we're hearing out there. If you sign up for a year, you get a month free, and you also get the honeydew a day early ad free at no additional cost, all right? You get the whole back catalog, all that shit. And ringtones of my laugh are available Again, don't know why the fuck y'all have been asking me for that, but I did it. It's out there. So now you better use it. Go to uh, go to my website, and you can find info there. It's available on iTunes, everywhere you get ringtones. Ringtones of my laugh are out there. And uh, Honeydew Athletes, keep sending them in. I'm looking for everybody out there that's different. I want different. I don't want, but I want good, okay? You got to be good. You can't just be, ah, you know, I fucking play Frisbee golf, and I came in last. No, I want the guy that's holding one in Frisbee golf, all right? That's who we want over here. Y'all know what we do. We highlight the lowlights. These are the stories behind the storytellers. I can't 
tell you how excited I am to have today's guest here. First time on the Honeydew. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Prof. Welcome to the Honeydew, Prof. Woo! How exciting is this? Um <laughs> I, I, I just want to talk about your ringtone, dude. You <laughs> mentioned you mentioned you were like, oh, you did all this business and the behind the scenes stuff, and you're like, yeah, then we're gonna talk about the ringtones. And then you said the ringtone of my laugh, and then that's just kind of all I want to talk about. Yeah, but we that's, can. That's incredible. <laughs> I listen. I've been podcasting for like ten years, and for ten years, people have been saying that. I, I don't. I don't use ringtone. Do you use ringtone? <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> Hold, on a second. <laughs> Hold on, it's my grandma. <laughs> Hang on, my grandma's calling. Like what? Oh, grandma died? Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> Imagine that's the worst news you're getting after that. <laughs> no, just some terrible fucking news. <laughs> Who's got cancer? Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, perfect. They keep calling. Perfect. Shit. Yeah. You fucking stalking somebody on my way. <laughs> What's my stalker calling again? Like It's like $1.29 on iTunes, y'all. Uh, people have been asking it for so long, and finally I just hit my label up. Thank you, Dom, at uh, Blonde Medicine. And I was like, man, people want this. Can you help me? And he yeah. figured it out and did it, and there they are. They're out there. I, I'm going to do know, it. I'm, I'm going to do it. Please. I would love it. Yeah. Um, so before we get into everything you'd like to talk about, man, plug everything you got going. No. <laughs> no. You really don't want to plug anything? No. Nah. You got to plug something. No. Nah. All right. You're the first guest. That's official. And I mean, oh, 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 this is my Twitter. This is my, like, you know. That's where you want to find let me, let me try out first. If you like this interview and you like all the stupid shit I say, then figure it out. You know? All right. Fair enough. Yeah, I do things. It's out there. All right. So I wanted to get into your life story because I know you rap. I know you're a Minneapolis guy, mm -hmm. but you didn't come up easy. This is why you're on the fucking show. So yeah. start, start, just go from birth. Well, yeah. So, uh. My manager was super hyped. He's like, "Oh, this is this is a direct hit for you. This 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 podcast, you know, Ryan Sickler, the Honeydew." He's like, "Look into it." And I looked, and it was like, "We're highlighting the low lights." I'm like, "Oh yeah, this is a direct <laughs> hit for me. Yeah, this is perfect." You know, but my fucked up life. And, and we so, were talking yeah. about how we wrote your uh, fucking trauma in a list, and it just if hearing my trauma in a list back to back, like without any of the good things, it's like, "Oh shit, how am I alive?" Right. Yeah. Without any of the good shit in How between. did I get here? Yeah. But you also realize that most of life is is, is bad. It's the yeah. the but highlights the, it, are. There's highlights. You That's what gets you through. Those, That's what you, you know? get. Exactly. what gets me through. See That's what happens right. next. You know what I mean? I like to keep working at things and and uh, make things, and see what happens next. You know. So, I was born in Minneapolis, uh, in Powderhorn, which was like a super super hood place in the in the in the uh, 80s and 90s. Really high murder rate. Uh, to a mom and a dad, uh, you know. And, Were they uh, married? So, like, right off the bat, I was a mistake with a family that was already separated. You know what I mean? So, Oh, so your parents had been together and split. It was my dad's were, one last fuck. You know what I'm saying? Like, they were already was, split I'll up. They hated later. each other. Yeah, like, so I, there was three girls, Christy, Charity, Sarah, and then and then it was like over. And then my dad, a little, you know, some pillow talk, whispered a couple more sweet nothings. And then pow, it was me. So I'm happy my mom didn't abort me. So that was cool. So you're the youngest of four then. Yeah. But okay. then th there's some mixed blended family shit mm -hmm. and lots of girls in my family. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, and yeah, that'll get complicated. But um, so then I was born, yeah, in Powderhorn, came up in Powderhorn. Parents separated like right away. Like my first memories were... Uh, like I asked my mom the other day, I'm like, we're, I have a memory and I, that's just, I've had in my head of like milk everywhere, you holding me, we are both wet. And then I'm like looking off a porch and like my papa, we call him papa, but like dad's getting arrested or something. She was like, oh my God. She was like, you were two, you were two years old. No way. Yeah. That, that's, I was th like, that's that oh, photo shit. stuck in your head. When I was two, she was Damn. like, you were legit two years old and that's a real memory. And what did she tell you happened? They got into a fight. Um, she threw milk at him or something, like her, you know, baby bottle or mm -hmm. something, and it was all over. And he was getting arrested and put in, shoved into a cop car. So that was my first memory. And uh, Jesus, that's the first memory. Yeah. Yeah, you're perfect for this yeah. show. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, you know, I, I'm like, I'm, I'm nervous <laughs> sitting here right now because I'm like, oh god, like, I got some juicy shit for you, man. It's gonna be a five hour podcast. Can't wait. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, then they separated. And he, you know, turns out later, much later, I learned he was just totally fucked up. He was he was mentally unstable. He, okay. he was bipolar. 
you know, super abusive. But did they know that back then? No, or is no, that when they're he finding was, this out? No, he, they didn't, we didn't know that. He was, was so say, smart. He was think so people smart. were diagnosed like that back then. But he right? was so charismatic. Yeah. If he was on a high cycle, you know, on some uh, fucked up shit in his head, he, he would just, he would control the room. He was a preacher. You know what I mean? And people fucking loved him. And then he'd come home and fucking whoop my ass. You know what I mean? Like, Oh, really? Yeah. He was, he was so charismatic. He was so intelligent, super tortured man. You know, so uh, I don't so even know where to what, go. When your parents split, do you live with mom? Do you get to see mm. dad? Do you bounce back and forth? How I live with mom. Work? I live with mom. Um, and she she's like the best person I've ever met. Any anybody me meets her, they're like, oh, oh my god. Good. Without her, I'd be in jail, dead. I'm sure you hear this. People say that a lot. But after some of the stories you might hear, you'd be like, oh, you you. Without her, I would be fucked up. So you know, um, I stayed with her. You know, and there's like stories of like I thought I. I my, my childhood was amazing, you know, and I, I remember having like this big teddy bear for a bed being like, I have a, you know, my bed is a gigantic teddy bear. But like, then the story comes out that it was just a big, like fair toy that they found on the back, uh, on the highway. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm sleeping on. You know what I mean? So <laughs> a fair, a fair, yeah. Like a left, like just fucking on the side of some garbage. They so, yeah, picked up some garbage. Dad, like, well, there goes that motherfucker. And so. I slept on that, you know, I threw 97 miles an hour for yeah. that bear. God damn it. <laughs> and that's my bed. <laughs> that that's my bed. bed. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but then, you know, my mom was like, she, she wanted a father in my life because he was a good disciplinarian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey. But um, when he was on, he was he was he was a great person a lot of the times. But the thing was, it would just wow, and then it would be someone completely different. But I have a lot of really good memories with him. Really what, good education. Let me ask you, what did your mom do? A teacher. She was a she teacher. Was a teacher. Okay. Yeah, we were in Section Eight poverty. Like it was crazy. She was a single mother with four kids. Um, you can't do this no more. So I, I, I don't the know success how anyone story. ever did. Yeah. Sing, single mother, four kids, uh, section no. eight, uh, on welfare, went to a community college, got a degree, became a teacher, supported all of us wow. on that, bought a house. Like, right, yeah, no millennials can do that no. kind of shit anymore. Teachers, I, I say this all the time. When we grew up, teachers had homes. Mm -hmm. no, there wasn't a teacher I had. Teachers had lived in apartments. Yeah, you know? that's so fucked up. That, that's they not don't the even case have anymore. They can't buy houses anymore. You're right. When I grew up, teachers weren't homeless. Yeah, <laughs> you know it was, it was a great time. I think they should let them live at the school. You know what the yeah. fuck, live work. Yeah, or pay them a decent wage. Okay, so she so, brings. So she brought my dad in. Mm -hmm. He won half custody, and then I was just you know back and forth, one week on, one week off, living okay. in a suitcase for fifteen years. Yeah. And what was it like living at dad's? It was a shit. He let me swear. Super. Uh, uh, real boy tomboy shit you know fight, fighting like he would you know with all my sisters when a suitor would come my sisters were older than me and when any, anybody tried to date my sister a suitor that's such a that's so a you're suitor, old fast. a suitor <laughs> what am what, 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 what I saying hey, when, when, when a boy tried to fuck my sister <laughs> yeah, like, I, mean, I don't know a, guy, suitor. A, a guy came around a yeah. suitor he would throw fucking boxing gloves on and in the backyard just in the hood in Potterhorn he'd be like there you go buddy and he'd be like, hold on, hold on. I come to date your sister. Before I'm allowed to take her out, I got to fight your dad. <laughs> Woo! Man, I got a new thing I'm doing. <laughs> my room. You watch this My shit? room, I would go right up to my bedroom. <laughs> flip. I'd flip open the blinds, and I would just watch my dad beat the shit out of, like, teenage boys. Underage kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's abusing them out in the backyard. Yeah. yeah. Oh shit! Look, motherfucker, I got three girls. Let me beat one more. Yeah. So kid. no, he. The, the, so the boys would. Anybody be ever really take nervous? Him? Oh yeah, yeah. Anybody ever catch him? So it was a crazy uh, psychology experiment, right? He'd be like, so he could figure out anything he wanted to about these kids. So he'd be, they'd be warm up. The boys would be giggling. <laughs> then my my posse would be like, bah! <laughs> just a jab, just, just right to the head, and they'd be it's like, not, what? Not and he'd be like, he'd be like, huh? That's, that's a joke, huh? <laughs> bah bah! And he'd hit him a couple times, and then. Then he'd wait, see how they react, what kind of person they are. You know I, mean? I love it though. It's crazy as fuck, but I do love, I love my the dad's psychology. Behind. Fucking nuts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Holy. So shit. then, yeah, a couple times if they'd hit him, then it would open my dad up for some a real gut shot or something to the stomach or something. Yeah, so it was. It He's was, like, I'm not gonna fuck with this kid. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah he, he was, knew he was, the ones he you was could wild. take. Yeah, uh, and then he would decide, you know, after if they were cool and deserved the respect or whatever, you know. And then they could date his daughters. Mm -hmm. Jesus, what did, what was it like for you to bring girls around him? Uh, 
he burned my house down before I did that. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I don't think I really brought girls around him, really. I wasn't talking to him at that point. So What do you, what happened? Uh, I was 15, and um, we got new of, like, I was getting older. Yeah. And I was figuring out, like, oh, this shit isn't normal. Stronger also. You know also. what I mean? Mm, no, nah, I wasn't getting stronger. No, no, no not <laughs> yet. No. That didn't happen until I was like, that never happened. Okay. But, never. Uh, uh, I was like, man, that doesn't make any sense. I, I don't even remember what we were arguing about, but there was this huge fight. And I was 15. I was like, I get it now. Fuck you, man. Like, this is... And he wasn't diagnosed. No one knew he was, you know, only mm-hmm. after he died did we, like, it, this, these secrets come up, like, addicted to opiates and, like, bipolar and, you know, I don't know if he's officially diagnosed or undiagnosed or whatever, you know. But, um, yeah, he was crazy. Like, we we would uh, go to McDonald's, one trip up to, to McDonald's, the whole family, after we would work, he'd take us work to, to workouts at the YMCA, and then we'd go to McDonald's afterwards. And just eat a bunch of junk food. And it was just fucking, it was the 90s. You know what My I mean? mother like, used to take us to McDonald's. And then, I mean, we would, she'd be like, get your food. We'd eat it. And she'd be like, I'm dropping you off at soccer practice. I'm like, we just oh. ate fucking trash. People were dumb. We just yeah. took things for granted. We weren't like, what's in this? It's yeah. Just, whatever. But wait, you jumped over. You said he burned your house down. We can't oh, yeah. just we can't just jump over. Oh, oh yeah. We'll get there. But I'm so, showing, I'm, this oh, is okay. some psychology before. I just before. don't want to make sure we This forget. is some psychology before. So we're going to uh, uh, McDonald's after a workout, and he he sees a, a big SUV filled with uh, bloods throw some trash, and, and they dro- drove out. So what he this is the type of dude he goes, you know, hey, that's with his with his family, all his kids, you know, white dude, and you know, <laughs> fucking he goes, go inside, order this food. You know, don't, you know, and then he just tells us all to go in there, order food. So I'm like, all right, whatever. And I'm in there ordering food. And he's got this like starter jacket that's like reflective. It's like nighttime now. I'm ordering my food. And then like, I see this jacket just moving around like, <clears throat> like faster than a human could move around. Like, that's all I see. I just see this jacket just being tossed around. I'm like, and I'm like no, no, no. And then I keep on ordering for like another 30 seconds. And I was like, no, I gotta look back. I gotta look back again. And he's getting he's getting his fucking ass kicked. And I'm going to my and I, my stepmom. I'm like, hey, look at this. And he's just he just decides to fight. You know, like uh, eight to ten like fucking Cambodian bloods, like because they littered. You know what I'm saying? And he's he. <laughs> He's in this. You either pick the trash up or well, you he, shut the fuck. Well, he told them. He said, "Pick that fucking shit oh, up," you know. God. And then, then they're like, "What?" You know, like they all get out the car and he's like, "Pick that shit up," you know what I mean? Like, and he's he he was a big dude, you know. Like I'm six one. He was probably six two, six three, and like he was it was he was fighting like eight dudes, and he was he was so fucked up, lumped up, Quasimodo shit, and you know. And then he came back, uh, and like the the cops were there, and I remember him sitting in the McDonald's table, like, and I was just right across from him, and he was like, "That's what we do," you know. He's like, "Yeah," and he he was he was fucked up. His face looked different. <laughs> That's what we and I remember do. being like, <laughs> "Oh, so, so yo," from then on, I was like, "I'm a fighter." I'm a oh fighter. My that's that's God. my blood. So yeah. Oh, so that's just some psychology of this man. That's what we do. Yeah. And so yeah, I got into a lot of fights when he was after he died, and I was just getting drunk and battling and rapping and shit and on the streets. I was just uh, fighting everybody, you know. So psychology of the man. Boom! Fast forward a little bit later, and he's you know he's in the basement lighting lighting a fire to the house. And now is this his house or your mom's place? This is his house now. Okay. My mom moved out. Okay. Um, found, you know, married again. And I don't remember what we were arguing about, but, you know, it, I remember being like, fuck you. And, and he was devil face. I knew what I knew. I knew that switch. It was serious. Like we were, we, we had a circular dinner table and we were moving around that thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, um, and then I left without anything. Fuck you. He, he, he was so brilliant. Every argument he won and he would shape people's thoughts, you know? And this is the first time I was like, that's not going to happen anymore. You know, and I was his, his son. He always wanted a son. It was all about that masculinity, that testosterone. So, like, he he, he basically manifest destinyed me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, like, um, I was really important to him. And the control was really important for him. Can I ask you this? Like, during the time you said he was abusive when he was with your mom, did he continue to be abusive when you would go to his place for the week at a time? Yeah. Was he still <clears throat> physically abusive as well? He, uh, you know, talking back to my sisters and everything, um, he was, like, mentally abusive to them, and he would throw, he would do things like, 
just flip over fucking, you know, in an argument if he didn't win, he would just... But he never he, hit them? He never hit them. Okay. Uh, and he hit me, um, and they didn't know that. I was like, I never told you? They were he like, never no. did it in front of them either? No. There was one time I swear my sisters were around, and he fucking licked me up, and he threw me down the stairs, you know what I mean? Jeez. And I swear he, they were there. I don't remember which sister it was. A lot of my, a lot of my memories are really foggy over these events in the past. Um, and so the burning down the house one is the, is the same. I don't remember everything about it, but I remember I was like, nope, argument ain't going to happen. You're not going to shape my shit. And I left, cooled off, um, went to a neighborhood uh, girlfriend's house and uh, hung out there for an hour or two, had, had to come home for dinner or something or whatever. And I call home landlines, busy, call home landlines, busy. Call home landline busy. All right, well, can you just drop me back off, you know? And so they dropped me back off in the neighborhood, you know, right in Powderhorn, right in the hood, 32nd, 16th, boom, you know? <clears throat> and there's just fucking, the, the whole, you can't even get two blocks to it. There's there's seven or eight fire uh, trucks, police cars and everything. And, Do you um, think right away it's your shit? Or no, 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 no. I'm like, oh shit, yeah, here it goes again. <laughs> Who's dead? You know, that's what it is. Like in the hood, I'm like, oh, dope. You know, like when I was a kid, I didn't know how, tr you know, like I, I took pride in that shit because it made me tough. Like, bitch, I saw, you know, like We're gonna I get saw to some that. shit today yeah. again. Da, da, da. Like, so I'm thinking, oh, whoa, this is crazy. I'm like, just drop me off here. So like, uh, you know, the, the my girlfriend's dad just, he was like, okay, and, you know, took a left or whatever. And then I'm like, crazy, duck under the lines. And then I'm like, crazy, this is real close, you know, running up more and more. And then- Bro, like, I I returned and the house was on fire. On fire, like it was on fire, and it was, God, it was it. like a fucking movie. Uh, I was screaming and um, I ran right. All these fire, they were the firemen weren't paying attention. Nothing. I just went right in my front lawn. Hey! I'm, and they're just running around me. No one's like picking me up or moving me. It was the most dramatic shit. I'm at my knee, like, no! <laughs> like, seriously, screaming right in front, like uh, 10 feet away from this fire. Fire's Platoon coming out of fucking windows. Yeah, yeah. Platoon shit. Yeah. Yeah. God. Yeah. yeah. I are you freaking out? Like, are your sisters in there? Or is your dad in there? I'm alone. I don't know where anybody is. Fuck. I don't know what the fuck happened. And they could be in there. You don't yeah, know. I don't know. Yeah, we lost like a dog, an iguana, like some pets and shit burned. Um, but so no one was in there? Family? No family was hurt. Okay. Um, so what happened? Then my sister arrives. I don't know where she was at. And then she's like, you know, I was like, no. But then a tough boy, like, damn, you know, what's going on? And she was just, she hugged me, broke down, cried like crazy, screaming, crying for, you know, the whole time. And I was like, oh, yeah, this is serious. And then in the back of my mind, I was like... I, I don't know what happened. You, you did, know? huh? And then that's when you thought it, like mm -hmm. he did this? Yeah, where's he at? Oh, he's gone. Oh, the car's gone. He's not around. Yeah. So we knew that. And then, you know, I went on some trip like the day after or something. <laughs> like that was scheduled, you know, like, a, um, and we knew we just lived in a, a, a hotel for a while. Now, did he, do you think he did it for insurance or do you think he just no, did it? No, 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 no. He was no. About this. He, he did it because of me. Just pissed off. Pissed off. I mean, Burn I don't. I don't take. I don't take. Down. I don't take responsibility for it. But sure, he, you uh, should. Yeah. He didn't do it because I, it's not because of me. You know. I don't care what argument you have. Yeah. <laughs> burning someone's home, your own home, your own home. That's where I live too. You know, like man, hey, can't control his boy anymore. You know, it was kind of like it, son eat father, father eat son. Shit. You know. Mm -hmm. Like we, someone's was, someone was killing someone and it was just like that. So that shapes a lot of my fucking, my language, you know, like, you know, I say a lot of rough shit just because it fucking feels good, you know? So that happened. And then, you know, he escaped and was like on the run for a while. Fucking, they found him with his wrist. He was a nurse. So he knew how to slit his wrist. He's a nurse too? Yeah, he was a nurse. He was a nurse. He was a preacher. He was a fucking yeah. He, he, yeah. he like studied lots of shit. He was fucking brilliant. And um, so but yeah, he knew how to slit his wrist. They found him in fucking in a hotel in Duluth with like blood on the ceiling in a tub. Barely saved him. And then so like for that summer, you know, we figured out he came back. He was alive, and he you know he wore that classic fucking bandages around his wrists all summer long because it was that deep 
shit, I don't know how he didn't die. Um, and then the next four years are super fuzzy. I was just doing my thing and like. Do you remember ever having a conversation with him about why he burned the house down? This is the biggest open wound of my entire life. Never happened. I didn't talk to him for a long time. And he fucking decided to die before I could resolve anything. So I want to say 15, you said, was how old you were when the house 15 is when the house went on fire. And and he died when I was like 20 or something. So you only had a five-year window that you don't know you have, obviously. Mm -hmm. And you never got to have that conversation of why you burned that That house. That is worse than anything. There's no resolution. Uh, and that's why, like, I use rap as, like, I figured it out, you know, fucking some fucked up shit happened to me in 2020. And I'm, like, th thinking about my past. Trying to figure out why I am, why I am. And, like, I use rap to take control back from my dead father. I love it. That's about what it is. I mean, it's what I do. I use humor to mm -hmm. combat the abuse from my mother and mm -hmm. everything I've dealt with. It's yeah. The humor, man. Yeah, I got in trouble for humor in some tweets. <laughs> and um, but I'm like, that's that's what that's what gives me resolution and and control over those things. If I can joke about them, bro, they're that's not a problem to me no more. Right. You know? Yeah. And that's you why take I fucking the power do that away shit. from it. Exactly. But like I say all the time too, like healthy people, look, you need to sit in your own shit. You need to sit there for a little bit. You need to look around. You need to smell it. You need mm -hmm. to feel it. You need to know what that's like. And then you need to decide, am I going to stay here or am I going to get the fuck up out of here mm -hmm. and move forward? That's mm -hmm. it. If someone can self-deprecate in humor, when I boom, if I meet someone and they fucking insult themselves <laughs> with humor, I'm like, right away, wide open door, man. What's your number? Like that, that, that takes, that's just a sign of so many good. Well, y'all should have showed things. up at the comedy store Saturday night when oh! you had tickets. That's where I was. I'll self deprecate myself all night on stage. That was wild. <laughs> just to let everybody know, we had tickets to his show. We didn't even know you were performing. Yeah. They don't, they don't advertise it, right? We were, uh, gonna, you got to go on their social media and, and look oh, for it, but they promote it. We missed out. We were, they, usually what they do is put the lineups up. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then you just got to look for the names. Fuck, if we would have yeah. known, we would have canceled what we were doing it's all good. we missed that show but i love that you you take that and harness it and use it that you know that power that way let's take a quick break and tell you about our first sponsor upstart if you are carrying a credit balance month after month it can feel like you're in a never-ending cycle of debt upstart can help you make that final payment so you can get ahead upstart is the fast and easy way to pay off your debt with a personal loan all online. Whether it's paying off credit cards, consolidating high interest debt, or funding personal expenses, over half a million people have used Upstart to get one fixed monthly payment. I say it all the time. You guys are using Upstart. You like Upstart. I wish I had something like this. You know, I was always rotating high interest credit card balances and trying to do what I could, and you end up paying thousands and thousands of more dollars than you really need to pay. Uh, so Upstart knows you're more than just your credit score, and it's expanding access to affordable credit. Unlike other lenders, Upstart considers your income and your current employment to find you a smarter rate for your loan. And with a five-minute online rate check, you can see your rate upfront for loans between $1,000 to $50,000, and you can even receive funds as fast as one business day after accepting your loan. Here's what you got to do, all right? Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash honeydew. That's upstart.com slash honeydew. Don't forget to use the URL to let them know I sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, your income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash honeydew. Our next sponsor is Liquid IV. The hot summer months are here, and we need to be proactive to keep our body fueled up and hydrated. All right? I love Liquid IV. You know, we've been talking about it from the pandemic till now with summer to drinking, hangovers, whatever it is, it works. Stay hydrated. Take care of yourself out there. Makes your skin look good. Makes you feel good. And Liquid IV is the truth. I'm telling you. All right. Liquid IV hydrates faster and more efficiently than water alone. It contains five essential vitamins, more vitamin C than an orange, and as much potassium as a banana. It's healthier than sugary sports drinks. There are no artificial flavors or preservatives, and there's less sugar than an apple. It's made with clean ingredients, non-GMO, vegan, and free of gluten, dairy, and soy. And what makes Liquid IV so effective 
is the cellular transport technology that CTT, y'all. The optimal ratio of glucose, sodium, and potassium delivers water and nutrients into the bloodstream. It's the perfect balance to help you hydrate more quickly and effectively than water alone. One stick of liquid IV in a 16 ounce of water hydrates faster and more efficiently than water alone. Liquid IV is on a mission to change the world. Liquid IV has donated over 11 million servings globally. Here's what you got to do. Grab your liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code HONEYDOW at checkout. We all use it here. Everybody here is using it. The kids in the the Outreach Through the Arts programs are using it. They all love it. That's 25% off of anything you order when you get better hydration today using promo code HONEYDOW at liquidiv.com. Now, let's get back to the do. Um I got a lot of things I want to ask you. What other things did you want to talk to your dad about that that you didn't get to? Or what are you looking back on it now? Okay, because you haven't said this yet, but you're a father now. Mm-hmm. You had a baby. You had a daughter. Dar- no. 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 You but had, I had a baby. You had a baby. Well, now everybody knows it's a son. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. No, not a daughter. I just had a baby. Oh, I thought you said my girl, but you meant your girl had. You yeah, girl my girl had, had a baby. baby. Gotcha. So you have a son. Yeah. And... Not a year yet, or coming up. He's on a year. A year. He, he was born right when the entire world shut down in COVID. Fuck. Well, did that scare the fuck out of you? That was very, very scary. Having a Every, baby in a hospital during all that. Yeah, yeah. like uh, everybody was scared when COVID and everything locked up. But like we were in a hospital, and then they kicked everybody out. Then my baby had some crazy shit where he had to stay in the ICU for seven days. So we were sleep and, it, and we were sleeping on the floor in a hospital. You know, waking up every three hours trying to feed him. You know, mm-hmm. all that kind of crazy shit and. uh Every time we would go walk down to see my guy, my little dude in the ICU, the everything changed. Like it was like a weird story of like Auschwitz. I don't know if this is bad, but like th- more things happening. Every time we go downstairs, there's another fucking police officer, more police officers. Then there's tape, then there's ropes, then there's like, so every time we went up and down, I'm like, oh shit. So like day three, I was like, this is some weird m- militarized. I'm like, man, I, no one knew what the fuck was going on. Yeah. This dude is like, in tubes and shit up his nose and fucking getting pricked all the time. I'm like, this is the craziest shit that's going to happen to me in 2020. Not even close. <laughs> it was like, um, yeah. So yeah, he, he turned out to be good. Um, so let's go he, back. Now you're a father. Yeah. I mean, my father was everything to me. He died when I was 16. And I know when I was just sitting uh, there holding my daughter in my arms. Boom. I mean, it was this bittersweet moment where I'm so happy to be a dad, but I don't have one. I can't. I have no library of information to go to. Like, how the fuck did you do? You had twins, bro. Why didn't you bounce in the 70s? You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, you were a real fucking man. You're a twin? How'd you do that? Yeah, fraternal twin. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, boom, boom, and nothing. And all these moments. And so I, my daughter knows who my father is. And there was one night she just started crying. I go, why are you crying? She's like, I miss Grandpa Lefty. And then I just started bawling. I was like, I do too. Like, what the fuck are you? T- you didn't even met him. So I got pictures of them around the house. I make sure she knows who the everyone is. I know, make sure she knows where she comes from. Uh, anytime she falls and gets hurt, I make sure I tell her she's got Baltimore blood in her. Get the fuck up. You know, you, we ain't no pussy. We ain't no you, Santa Monica pussy. Yeah, bro. first time I hear you and you're like, y'all. So I'm, I'm like, what? Is he from Texas? What the fuck? I couldn't get it. But yeah, Baltimore. All right. Yeah, so. Yeah, but uh, losing someone like that. What are you that? dealing with as a father right now and losing your father? You know, you yeah. How is that affecting you? I mean, the other day I was like, man, as as an adult in my 20s, I was looking back. I was like, I wish I had someone like a, a role model man who could let me know what I'm what's happening to me in my 20s. And like, and, yes. and then I went, oh, that's a father. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> oh, that's a dad. Oh, shit. I, I wish I guess I wish I had a dad. Yes. Teach me about money and not just how to spend it and save it. You know, teach me about or all like, kinds. I don't know like, anything. Teach me about like my anger and what, what and mm-hmm. dr- drink and drugs and shit. Teach me about like wh- how do, what what happens with a job or like th- th- those kind of things. Yeah. You know. So yeah, the I get, best thing my father did, and you didn't get this, but well, maybe you did because you said he was charismatic. Mm-hmm. He worked. He hustled. He, so he maybe gave me a lot. Did, but uh, yeah, I. I my father was an example of how to be. So I didn't get those conversations from 17 to 48, mm. but my my father was an example of the type of person and man to be, and that Good was guy. enough. Yeah, okay. I got it. Okay. You know. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck. 
I don't know. I I I get triggered. It's 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 you know, and um, there's times like you said, like when your daughter says something like that, or you know when you know if you get big big life events, boom. That's just that just bloodline's gone. Like that's such a like a re- crazy bitter sweet thing to like share with other people too. Like I love like hurt hurt people who like mm-hmm. can sympathize with that and understand what that feels like, and it's just like a deeper meaning. And it's like for me, it's just a crazy hole that I think. A lot of anger comes from me, you know what I mean? That I still kind of, kind of got to deal with, you know, because he did. All he did was get, fight in our all, 20s. All, all he, and, 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 and he, and he never. I wish I could just approach him as a man and just be like, you know, also like, who, who I am now. I wish he could see who I am now and yeah. just sit down with him and. But it'd be interesting to see who he is now too, mm-hmm. you know. And I wonder too if being a grandfather changes the man too. Absolutely, you and know? I, he was trying to change. Like, because my mother's a, a a better grandmom than she was a mom. To you know, mm-hmm. I know that. for Yeah. Sure. Well, it, probably in my twenties, I would want to fight him. Mm-hmm. Like, if you if he, I were to bring him back I to life, that. I would yeah. be like, all right, let's fight. You know, I wouldn't even want to talk. And like now, I'm like, maybe I'll just ask him some questions and shit, and like see if forgiveness is, is something. You know what that's I mean? Like that's, you, yeah, it's because you're healing. Yeah. yeah. You don't want to fight all the time. Plus, you can't be, you're not, you look like you're, I swear to God, you look like you're goddamn 27 to 30. Uh-huh. You told me you're 37, uh-huh. but you can't be, you know, that dude in your 40s still fist fighting people. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Only in self defense. Yeah. You know Last time saying? I got in a fight, it was in uh, St. <laughs> Louis, and I jumped off stage and hit a fan in the stomach. <laughs> For what? What did he do? He took my microphone at, at the fucking at climax of the show. We have this whole thing. We're going back out for the encore, and I'm like, yeah. And I hold the, the microphone over the crowd like this on the stand, and he just oh, goes, he... cloop. And because then I need to do that and grab the microphone for like some last thing. And he's like, ooh. And he's all drunk, and he runs away. And I and I still got like, I've been good, but sometimes it goes, clip, boom, and a clip. I'm just like, just run out there, and I'm just, I'm like, going on across, put one in his stomach and take my microphone back. But it was cool. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't know where we're headed with this. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of anger and rage. Oh, like what? Well, yeah, well, my, you know. All right, so now all that's happening with your dad and everything. Where is mom? Um, obviously, your relationship's super strong. Is she just that yeah. backbone for you to go and talk to? And- yeah, always, all the time. So she's always been there. And um, well, listen, your mom's dealt with men in her life. It's mm-hmm. not like she can't fucking give you some sound advice on men as well. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, my mom was a G. She's like a cute little tiny very beautiful like a uh, blonde woman but then you, i ask her questions about stuff she, she's i ran away from house when i was 16 i hitchhiked to california and one of in a girl's house i'm like wow you're she, she's a hood motherfucker and she, <laughs> i'm like damn you, you a thug you a thug yeah. so um yeah i'm just did you ever ask your mom what she saw in your dad and what it was about him that got them together Originally, no, but Wait. I don't. I don't need to. D- dude could win over anybody. Yeah, he was on if he wanted to. You know, yeah, he could win over anybody anytime. So I want to ask this question: When they found him near death, did he also get arrested for arson? Like, did they? Yeah, pr- he went to prison. So he went to prison. So yeah. how did you visit him in prison? Fuck no, I didn't talk to him for like five years until okay, he so fucking died. Moment. He was yeah. on a fucking stationary bike. At the YMCA in Minneapolis. No, the one he would take you guys to. It's at McDonald's. That motherfucking McDonald's came back to get him, got that. That motherfucking McDonald's. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. He tried to fight his way through it, too. Oh, He's like, man, oh, he, no, he no, did. it was. Uh, he was get like, back along. what the I'm fuck is this? this He's like, oh, man, my heart attack? <laughs> ah, ah, I'm going to pedal this shit. Well, You're on a stationary bike. Walking you ain't going off. nowhere, yeah. bro. <laughs> You ain't walking a heart attack off, bro. Yeah, yeah. So um, he died there. Yeah, in front of like a, a bunch of yeah, like yeah. And when, when all right, so so fun. That's I, funny. It is. That's funny. weird. Like, I would like to say like he died in a shootout or something. No, he died no. on a stationary bike at the Y at the YMCA Southdale, Minneapolis, in front of a lot of people. Yeah, in front of people working out with the headphones in and I shit. I mean, shit. That's terrifying if you're them to see that go down. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm, I'm stopping. I'm like, Workout's this, over. This exercise bikes ain't no good for you, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm done working out. Let's mm. go to McDonald's. <laughs> what, do you continue as they like wor- just take them out on a stretcher dead? <laughs> like, I'm going right, like, to kill this workout. All but right, that cool. is how life is. That's oh. how life is. Your dad's gone out, gone, and everybody else is just pedaling on bikes. I remember we did the Vegas Comedy Festival like two years ago, and we're walking down the, the street, and someone literally on this corner over here gets shot. 
He's right there. While we're all there, you hear people scream, everybody. This motherfucker shot. He's dead. But everybody's walking by with their hurricanes, just sipping their straws and shit. You know what I mean? Life doesn't give a fuck. I like that about it, though. It, like, uh, there's something about that. You know, after a huge death or something like that or something fucking awful, there's something comforting. The birds don't give a fuck. The sun's going to rise and it's going to be like, tweety, tweety, tweety. Like, I like yeah. to imagine myself when I meditate. I don't know how to meditate, but I like to have a cup of coffee in the morning and then just, like, pull my head about 300 feet in the air and just look around at the trees and shit. And that's fucking... They don't give a fuck what happened Man, about anything. I've never had that thought. I'm going to try that, that now. That's what I do every morning. That is meditating, then. You do know, I don't know how what to it is. I don't know what it is, but I like to float in the air and just look at the city. Fuck yeah. I usually sit up on a cloud, you know. <laughs> Damn, man, <wow. laughs> Um, Wait, I want to go back to your dad dying. Talk, walk me through that day for you. Who calls you? How do you find out? What happens? I was at, I was in I was in an apartment. I was living with uh, in an apartment with my sister in Uptown. And I was like with my ex girlfriend at the time. I don't know what the fuck she was coming to get something or something. And you know, I'm just got to get a phone call from my sister. Oh, dad had a heart attack. Oh, and I was like, my ringtone coming in. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, dad's dying. <laughs> All right. And then so your sister oh, he's, called. He's you? having a heart attack. Oh shit! Fucking. Okay, that's crazy. And then <laughs> <laughs> second call. He's dead. You know. And then I just sank to the fucking floor. Oh. What did that feel like? Legs gave out. Um, no platoon no, shit. Yeah, I'm in yeah. the front. Then I'm in front of my house as it's burning down. Uh, felt fucking really weird. Like this is this is happening right now. It's really crazy that I have a lot of and familiar, familiar, really weird, tragic feeling. That's I've had a lot of it. Here it is again. Like here it comes. It's I can't explain it. It's like a something's unreal some twilight zone type shit but it's deep and it hurts and it's like fake it's not real and it's, that was going on and i'm oh this is familiar familiar feeling yeah um how did your mom react to that do you remember i don't Talk, remember you have you ever talked to your mom about your dad passing did she come to the know. funeral and stuff like that or was it like was it that bad where she wouldn't even do that she was at the funeral. She was. I think. I don't know. Yeah, right? Uh-huh. I, I, I think I have a lot of really... I think uh, losing memory over traumatic events is real. I think that's really happening. Oh, and, it definitely and, did. I remember think, my dad's... I remember the viewing way better than I remember the funeral. I don't remember the mass. I remember the ride to the cemetery. I don't remember what was said or who the fuck talked at. The, oh, mm -hmm. I remember throwing some dirt on the motherfucker and mm -hmm. getting out of there, and that was it. You I know? remember, like, walking my... Like, everybody looking at me, like... You know, as I walk in with his fucking casket or whatever, and then like sitting down and being like, everybody's looking at me. I'm a young dude, and I'm here's my dad. You know, I remember, I remember that, and I, you know, I'm, I'm sure I had conversations with my mom and shit, but like, bro, I don't remember. I've toured the country fifteen times over again, every single fucking city, and so like, my memory's fucked. I've done so many things and so lived so fast, like I don't remember shit. So that's the end of the episode, I guess. <laughs> All right. So I want to talk to you about when you first realized you had this gift in uh, rapping and how you sort of put your energy and time into that. It was a fucking survival technique, you know, like I, I was living in Powderhorn. I was getting my ass whooped all the time, like. White kid in Powderhorn in the 1990s was, you know, it wasn't that easy. You know what I'm saying? I would get beat, I would there, get beat how up. How many other white kids were there? Just you and your sisters? Yeah, just my family. <laughs> yeah. There were three other ones. Yeah. We all lived together. No, like I would love to go down to the park. Like I want to go and play and everything. But then like the football team would just like jump me and take my shoes and my clothes and stuff. Like this is <laughs> like it was the football. They were like in, in their uniform and shit. Uh, you know, like they, they weren't like trying to nonchalantly do this shit. Like the football team did it. I don't know. Uh, uh, so it was like, it was, it was, it was fucking, it was drastic, dude. It, it was, bro, it was like, I had to come to, like, I had to make a decision. Every time I fucking stepped out there, I was getting hurt. And then th there was options for me though. Like there was a couple people or, or else I would hurt someone else. That's the only way I, like... I'll be rolling with some this new crew. Here's some knives and shit. Hey, let's go fucking take these bikes and shit. I'm like, oh, this feels better. All right, so I'm going to rob this dude with y'all and take his bike and shit. Mm -hmm. So th that's cool. 
I'm like, do I have to? So if, if I step out this fucking house, I need to either. Someone's getting hurt. I need to fucking stab somebody or, or I need to be the hardest motherfucker out here to prove myself over and over again or else I can't come out the house. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I was, th- I was thinking about it. Like, what the f- how, like, am I just going to be like a video game nerd? Like, I want to go outside. Like, I want to play sports and shit. You know, I want to do things. I didn't want to stay in the house. And it dawned on me. I was like, I just got to start clowning motherfuckers and make jokes. And wow, stab them lyrically, bro. Yeah. And so, I, you know, I was just joking on people, started rapping. And then I was like good at it, getting into who, battles. Who, who were your influences? Who were you listening to? Goody Mob. Yeah. Like a lot of a lot of Minneapolis rap was doing like this emo shit and like doing like very like backpack, like uh really conscious rap and shit. And I was like listening to like Ludacris and fucking Goody Mob and fucking, you know, I a million, a million motherfuckers, but more more like southern rap actually. Okay. Know? Yeah. So then, when you start, that was more the energy that I was feeling. I was, I was mad. It was, it was dirty. It was aggressive. Yeah. You know, and I, that, that was my shit. You like Trick Daddy? Mm-hmm. I love Trick Daddy. Trick Daddy. But I and liked I, him a long time ago. A I long, I, long time ago. I wish my manager was here. I, have a, I think I might have a song with him. See the Trick Daddy or um someone else. I don't know. I have a song with someone like that. Who's in the dude spinning around your hairs, man, like a helicopter, North Carolina? Is that Trick Daddy? I don't know. I got some cool features. Look it up. Follow me. Uh, fucking Prof Gompo at Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fucking 40 minutes in. He promoted. Um, yeah, I know, I know I you want to follow me you, now. Follow me now, motherfucker. <laughs> um, oh, shit. What the fuck are we talking about? We were talking about your early oh, rapping. days so then, rap, yeah, yeah. So, that, so, so that's then, how you, the way my I dad would use dead. humor. You're yeah, using my, at this time, he burned my house down. My dad was fucking dead, and I was just fucking angry. Um, and I loved art, dude. I was tagging. I was, you know, I was, I was, I was, I did, I did a lot of crimes and, um, you know, went to jail, you know, got caught, you know. It's the first time you went to jail. For what? Graffiti. You got arrested this, for graffiti. This story's fucking nuts. Yeah, I was, I was, I'm, 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 I was doing graffiti, dude. And then the police came. This is when I first experienced with police in Minneapolis. You? 15, 16. Okay. Is this is that this then this is after your house after your, the dad yeah after the house burned down but right your dad's I'm still not alive. talking to him right. and um dude you know cop car pulls up we're running we're hiding it's me and my my dude and we're hiding behind a uh in the, down the alley behind a uh, garage and the co- I hear the cop coming they, they were chasing us but he didn't he didn't know we were there he hears footsteps he's talking he's he's saying like this dude's scary. He's not like a poli- he's not like apprehend a suspect that you know. Yeah. I'm like, this was like I I uh, vandalized something and it was property damage. I was like, this is like he's gonna fucking kill me. He said that, and he started pissing. He was I was on this side of the wall. What? And he was on this side of the wall. And he started pissing right there. And while nah. he was saying how he's gonna fucking kill me, you see his piss. His, running? his nah. piss is like coming on me. <laughs> Like, oh, oh, no, it's coming oh, under all you. Yeah. Oh, and I was like, and my, my guy was right there, and the piss was going over my feet, and he saw it, and he was like, I ain't getting pissed on. And he just jumped up, boom, jackrabbit. Wow, just jumping over fences, boom, boom, lights go on. And then the fucking chase is on. And then I'm like, all right, I'm right behind you. And there's multiple squad cars or whatever, and uh, we're running as fast as we possibly can. And I'm, I was fast as fuck. I was varsity track if I wanted to freshman year. I was, yeah. I was skinny as hell. I was dipping. And this dude was dipping too. But when you're running as fast as you can, one six-inch curb does stuff. And he fucking fell down. I adjusted. And I looked back. And he was just, they just fucking fucked fuck him, him up. up. Fucked him up. And then so I'm looking back. I'm terrified now. I'm like, these dudes will fucking kill me. And then I, I run back to the uh, house we were all bombing out of. We had a crew and we were staying up at, you know, it was 5 a.m. or whatever. And we'd go out and just destroy Lake Street. Um, and there was, we can't, we went out in teams. Like we were thorough about our shit. And then um, the other team wasn't there yet, you know, and they didn't know what's happening. We're meeting back at the house. The other team that was out, you know, bombing. And then, so I'm just hiding there. And then I, then they, they come back and I get back and I'm like, yo, I'm trying to wash my hands. I'm like, they fucking, they got, they but got. you made it. You they got Tim. Got back, oh, oh, oh. Did I make it? <laughs> yeah, Did I make you it? made it back. So I'm like, oh, they, they, they got us. I'm like, they're, they're coming or whatever. They whooped the shit out of them, beat them, beat them, forced to confession. Where are you staying at right now? No. Yeah. And so 
uh, the brother, one of the guys who was with me, uh, the brother of the guy staying there, another dude kind of looks like me, police at the door. And I'm at the basement. Oh, the police are here. Go down. And, and, and I hear right above at the door, he goes, oh, opens the door. Well, well, wow, tidal wave. Whoop the shit out of him. Come in the house. Flip him over. Flip all the fucking. They, they destroy the whole house. Beat the shit out of him because he kind of looked like right, me or something. It might be you. It just might be. So oh, I'm, I'm hearing di dis disaster upstairs. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> so I'm, uh, uh, I'm going out the uh, basement, and then I go out the side door. Running out the side door. Doom, light goes on oh, again. Shit. Oh, shit. Here we go again. And then they chase me again. I'm in another foot chase, and I, I take them to this train tracks over the Mississippi River that are falling apart and that, are, like, closed. Um, like, the wood is, like, fucked up. And I'm like, and it's. 300 feet above the river deadly and i'm like i'm gonna go run across that you know because I, they're, they're gonna fucking kill me yeah minneapolis police bro there's some read look it up <laughs> you might have up. heard they're fucked it up yeah <laughs> yeah, so this no my, yeah yeah so you know i knew this shit early that it was like fuck 12 you know the mini especially minneapolis so yeah then i yeah that's one of the stories then i, I walk all the way from st paul minnesota all the way to fucking southwest minneapolis and like um, just getting my, just up, up Franklin hood ass, uh, street, just getting in fights with bums and wait, did, when did they get you? I turned myself in oh, to, okay. to, 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 because they took dude who looked like me. Oh, they did. Yeah. yeah. So I talked to my mom. She's like, I'll, 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 I'll walk in to jail with you. And I was like, all right. So, you know, she, she was by my side and we went downtown and turned myself in. They kept him. <laughs> they did anyway. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> So I was like, oh Poor shit! Son of a bitch, all he did was answer the door. Yeah. Well, no, nah, he, <laughs> he was he was he, he, he no nah, well, he, he did night, more that night. No, nah, he was doing other shit that night too. So, but uh, <laughs> uh, shit. yeah, and then I went I went to church the next morning. Did you? Yeah. Are you a church guy? No. That day you were though, huh? Well, I just wanted to like, you know, if you murder someone the next day, you just, just stick to your schedule. Yeah. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, I wasn't. A ch I mean. Once I saw my dad, who's a preacher, pastor, like, win everybody over and everybody being like, oh, you're the best. Like, anybody who acts holier than thou or preaches at anybody and says, I got to fit, like, that they, they got the angels on their side. I, I 100% agree. Suspect. Yeah, way nah, suspect. No. Nah. Let's take a quick break and tell you about our next sponsor, Ritual. We deserve to know what we're putting in our bodies and why, especially when it comes to something we take every day. Ritual's clean, vegan-friendly multivitamins formulated with high-quality nutrients in bioavailable forms your body can actually use. I take it every day. Been taking it every day for months. Stop taking the, the multivitamins that you can get in the store. I started reading up about them, and I'm telling I say it all the time, sawdust and all these other things garbage in this stuff. I get Ritual. It comes to my mailbox. I don't go anywhere, and I love it. It's got a, a minty, fresh taste to it that I, even though I still can't really taste much, can actually taste. All right? Ritual is the multivitamin reimagined. A multivitamin should contain key nutrients and forms your body can actually use to help fill gaps in the diet. No shady extras. Ritual's delayed release capsule design delivers high quality nutrients, including vitamin D3 and just two daily pills. All right. Ritual is made traceable. So you'll always know what nutrients you're taking and where they come from thanks to Ritual's one of a kind visible supply chain. Ritual makes healthy habits easy. Your multivitamins are delivered to your door every month with free shipping always. You can start, snooze, or cancel your subscription anytime. And if you don't love Ritual, within your first month, they'll refund your first order. Get key nutrients without the BS. Ritual is offering my listeners 10% off during your first three months. Visit ritual.com slash honeydew to start your ritual today. Our next sponsor is Magic Spoon. Growing up, cereal was one of the best parts of being a kid, but I had to give it up because I realized it was full of sugar and junk that you really just shouldn't eat but not Magic Spoon. It's got zero grams of sugar, 14 grams of protein, and only four net grams of carbs in each serving. It's also only 140 calories, all right? Try Magic Spoon's best-selling flavors in a four-flavor variety pack featuring cocoa, fruity, frosted, and peanut butter. All right, listen, I've tried all of them. I'm not even lying to you at all. They taste just like the cereals from your childhood. And you could take the cocoa and the peanut butter Throw them together. You know what I'm saying? It tastes just like cereal from your childhood, but 
It's super nutritious, okay? It tastes amazing, and it's honestly too good to be true. It's keto-friendly, it's gluten-free, it's grain-free, it's soy-free, and it's low-carb, all right? I promise you, I've tried all four of them. No BS. Go to magicspoon.com slash honeydew to grab a variety pack and try it today. And be sure to use the promo code HONEYDEW at checkout to get $5 off of any order. And Magic Spoon, listen to this, is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. I'm telling you guys, I've tried all four of them, and they're good. And... I can taste some of these, all right? But I can taste the sweet. I know what they taste like. And everybody I'm sharing them with, Ash just took the frosted ones today. Everybody loves them, all right? So that's magicspoon.com slash honeydew. Use the code honeydew for $5 off or just click the link below to save $5 today. Now, let's get back to the dupe. But you also saw some, you told me you saw some tragic shit too as a kid. You saw murders. Mm -hmm. You witnessed them. How, yeah, how, which, tell which me one about you want? Some of the, which any of them, all of them. There's a lot of shootings in Potterhorn, and there's a lot of them. My favorite. But were you part you of my a favorite? gang? No, not a. I mean, I was I was part of like a street gang for a while, robbing people for a while, but and, not. No, no, not it the was, Cambodian it was, Bloods. No, it was all. There was stuff. no white gang. Like yeah. I needed to join a black gang. That, that's kind of scary. Yeah. So I, yeah, I was doing scary shit for a while, but I was like, let me just be the com comedian, class clown shit. You know, I was a fucking clown in high school. Oh, that's what Chappelle talks about is yeah. like, if you see a white guy rolling with a black crew, you, that's the scariest motherfucker. Because whatever he did to, to win over that crew yeah. is fucking crazy. I knew that's and what I that's had to do. Guy, yeah, that's why you, I was like, yeah. I'm not going to be that guy. Right. Nah, I'm right. not that dude. Yeah, I'm not yeah, that dude. Yeah. I didn't want to kill anybody. I don't yeah. want to kill anybody, dude. Yeah. So, uh, the, your favorite one. My favorite one. murder. <laughs> my... Karen Kilgar. What the fuck he's doing? <laughs> Let me tell you about my favorite murder. Uh, my favorite one, fucking outrageous. Southside, Potterhorn shit. I'm coming, I'm on a school bus. Got my book bag. My sister's with me. We're getting dropped off. It's like 3 p.m. And we're, you know, riding up on my stop. Middle of the day. Yeah. Yeah. And the bus driver's like, comes to a stop. Just opens up the door. For <laughs> like, what the fuck? Like, like, oh, shit. You letting the bullets in? My <laughs> we get up. We were like, we're getting off here? Yeah, you know, it no. was, I mean, it was it was happening while we were pulling off. Yeah. But, like, we got out. And there's people just, they, they were dying. Like, the neighbor, yeah, there was, like, three or four of them drive by. Holy shit. Bus and driver, bus driver bus. was like, fuck this. <laughs> this is a stop. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so the neighbors were out. Um. Miss Delia Scully, uh, uh, a na uh, neighbor of a kid, uh, mother of a kid that I went to school with. She's like trying to save one. She's screaming, trying to perform this over here. And then, you know, they were running. So one's underneath the clotheslines in, in the backyard of another place. One's just right on the corner with just fucking real life blood everywhere. You're you seeing know, that I shit. just stepped right out, out into that. Fuck. And, you know. That's your neighbor. That's your neighborhood. That's my block. God damn. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so we we stayed around, and at this and, you know at this age it was so stupid, man. Can I ask I, you this: Is that was that your first time seeing a dead body that that time? Uh, I don't remember. I don't remember my first dead body. <laughs> I mean, that's early in your life, yeah, right pretty, there. I think I think that could be it. Yeah, yeah. And you're not just seeing one. There's three. Fuck. Triple homicide. They all got it. And so we stayed there. And at the time I remember being like, I wasn't, I didn't, I didn't know the value of life and shit. I'm looking at movies and I'm trying to be tough too in that neighborhood. So I'm like, I can't wait to brag to my friends that I just saw three dudes die. That's how I was thinking back then. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I look back now, I'm like, that fucked me up. You know, if I saw that now, I'd be like, fucked oh, up. Yeah. Hell yeah. Three humans really dying fucked in up. front of you. Yeah. But I was a child, man. I wasn't developed. Mm hmm. And so I, stu I stood around there like, I'm going to stay here. I'm going to take a step back and just watch it all. And then when the news comes, they're going to interview me. I'm here for the interview. I'm going to be on TV. You know? So I did that. And did you get the interview? They interviewed me. They really did? Yeah. Some white kid being like, hey, I yeah, saw this. That's what I'm saying. Me and my sister. I was like, Let's just stick right here. We don't need to go home right now. Let's just watch this be get cleaned up. And then when the news crew gets here. 
Let's get it on TV. Damn, dude. Um, yeah, I mean, the, 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 what else have you one seen? One night, my my house got shot the fuck up. The front of my house, Uzi or something. Just we were just sitting in in a house. I was upstairs in it, wrong house. I don't know. Like oh, it's not like this little fucking white family was. You know, it's like we did. Someone just shot up our house while I was in it. Like Jesus, thirty Christ. fucking bullets. <laughs> you know. Yeah. What else have you seen? Uh, <sighs> you seen murders. What other? What other kind? I haven't seen any. Well, I've seen some stabbings. Yeah. Yep. Street fights and shit like that. Um, What's the craziest thing you've seen in rap on the road out there? So I imagine your fans are quite different from my fan. I, look, we have a lot of the same fans, which first of all blew me away. So I know you got good fans. I know you got I know, good yeah. fans. They're, they're good. You they, know, they yeah. are. Yeah. But I will bet you've seen some shit out there. My one of one of the craziest, most fucked up, wild moments I've ever had in rap, where you look around and you're like. Look at this shit! Like it, it was, it was a show. Um, I was, I was younger, drinking at the Dinky Towner. It was a, a famous little, really shitty club that like, I was rapping at. Sixteen, seventeen would let me drink. I was a fucking man, you know. Um, but this was probably early twenties. It was a, we did a uh, Halloween show, and bring your costumes. So everybody's dressed up to the T. There was a costume competition with like a grand prize. And uh, this is when, you know, everybody knew my crew was fighting and shit. And um, uh, we did the show. And then my man Roswell, he well, like he does, he just started the fight somewhere. I don't remember how it started, but it it turned into just some, the show was over, bar closed. We were in the streets. Everybody's smoking, drinking straight, West Coasting. And um, pow, just the best, craziest fight start pops off out of nowhere. Everybody's in like Grover costumes and like mammograms <laughs> and like one dude's a, dressed as like a I'll tennis player with like, it. and everybody's bombing. Everybody's bombing. People got rackets. There yeah. was a, there was a dude who was dressed as a football player just knocking motherfuckers <laughs> out. And it was a, it was, it was a, it was a, it was like a fucking Irish fucking, it was like a, of lines of like 20 people versus 20 people like marching at each other and like there's one and you're up there rapping while it's happening no this is outside oh, it it's over, over. Okay, i'm in yeah, it yeah. i'm in it and you know um <laughs> there's just you look around and you're like this oh, this person's man. dressed this dude's this dude is knocking this motherfucker out and he's got like titties and like <laughs> and like he's dressed in drag and shit you know what i mean and and then there's this one one moment when you know i'm just <clears throat> no one knows what's going on or why anybody's getting fighting it's just Someone hit my friend. Now I got to hit you. And then, and then, and then you don't know. I remember one time I turned around and I'm about to, I hit this dude and he's like, prof, it's me. Like, oh, and I'm like, oh, you're on our side. Or like, <laughs> yeah, you don't even know. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then the seas parted. And then there's this huge man looking at me. I'm like six, one. He's like six, seven. And he's like, yup, me and you. And I'm like, Okay, <laughs> you know what I mean. I'm like, I would rather like sneak up and knock out this guy or whatever. But it was just like just me and him. And I'm like, I don't. He's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna fuck me up. But I was like, whatever. And I'm like walking at him, and then fucking out of nowhere, this tennis player, my my homie, fucking jump kicks him in the chest, and he flies into a car. <laughs> in the car. And then I love it. Yeah, dude. yeah. So that was I one of that was one of my favorite. Fucking Andre Agassi coming out yeah. of nowhere, drop kicking this motherfucker. Yeah. And then my homie Scotchy went to his trunk and he gets his real sword. Like this dude is like. Sword? Who carries a sword in their he, trunk, man? Dude, he does. It's, he, he he developed a reputation for this fucking sword in the neighborhood and Listen, stuff. Listen, I would say if you did that once, you got the reputation. Like, this he, motherfucker might pull a sword out. All he, you do is one. He did that over and over. There's a lot of stories about how Somebody he Somebody get, get out of traffic and just pop the trunk and, and, and pull I'm sword. like, no fucking sword, bro. Like, because he's huge. He's huge. I don't know. He, he was knocking out a lot of people. And it was, there was sword. Lots of blood in the streets. And then we fucking won. It was awesome. And then... Like everybody's like knocked out and we just walked away. It was crazy. But then one of my homies went back to like trying to like spit on them and then they all like woke up and then they just beat him up. <laughs> I'm like, why'd you go yeah, back? You I, I was already back. like, let's go. And then he was like, he went back and then they all woke up and beat beat his ass. But um, I want to talk about you also. Obviously, we had our situation here with uh, the riots and everything. And you mm. li you lived what you said that was your block. Yeah. Or you lived the right around the corner from the epicenter of everything? I'm, I was, there was, you know, uh, I moved from that house in the meantime. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I could tell you, I didn't want to say anything about it, but it was, there's only, there's a huge kind of um, 
Well, if you don't want to say area. anything about no, it. No, I'm out of there. I'm okay. out of there. There's this huge commercial area. My house is right on the corner of it. Mm -hmm. And so it was, I lived right next to the third precinct in Minneapolis. There's maybe, you know, considering how, you know, the blocks move around it and there's 10 houses closer to it. Mm -hmm. And I'm right there in the front yard. So people start looting and shit. I'm like the first residential block. And the, all the blocks started just filling up with cars. Like, you know, the protests were real and the people who were there to do that were doing good work. And then yes. they figured out, all right, this is the complete best place pandemonium. To meet. Complete pandemonium. Yeah. What else you want to do? You are you a, a bank robber? There's a bank right there. Now's the time. There's a bank right across from my house. Like, grab your dynamite. Let's rob this fucking bank. You know. So everybody was doing everything. So there was a moment where it was like pretty crazy. So I had all my friends over. We were all strapped. We were just in the front yard drinking, and it turns out, you know. It was pretty obvious right away. No one was fucking with residential shit. Even if, you know, you were there for like some fuck shit, no one was touching houses. That's the same like thing that. actually here now that you say that. It was all businesses and shit up this boulevard and stuff. Yeah, yeah. so that, that was cool. So, we, you know, I'm, I'm just fucking c c got a gun in my lap and I'm just watching it with my neighbors, drinking beer. And, you know, people are coming back from Target. They, they, they have just full shopping carts, full conveyor belt you know, double takes. I'm just, I'm filming people. I got footage of people just filling up their trunks, going on another trip. I'm like, what'd you get? You know, oh um, man, you know, I, I was, I was out for the PS4, but I got, you know, all I got was this Nintendo. I'm like, oh, I got, I'm yeah. like, all right. You know, it was, it was cool. But then, you know, then everything caught on fire and it was, it was, uh, one of those moments, you know, after one of those first nights, I was like, newborn baby just out of the hospital, all this COVID shit. Um, and they're starting to get sleep in there. I'm, I'm, I'm dozing off in some room, you know, still trying to stay awake through all this. And then my friend calls me, what are you doing? Where are you at? I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm at my house. He's like, the fire is jumping blocks, dude. It's, it, it's, it's on your block, you know? Whoa, it did get to your block. And I'm like, what? And I look out the front window and it, it, like I said, that familiar, just sinking feeling like fight or flight, everything comes down to one pivotal fucked up moment that there's that feeling I open up the window and I took video of it and I'm like I look up at this flame it's it's not it hasn't crossed my block but it's right beh behind the house like whatever's in front of me 700 foot flame in the fucking air and I'm like all right you know turn off the turn on the lights boom boom you know get up this ain't my first fire get up yeah ain't my first fire <laughs> you know I'm not I'm not an expert on like 700 foot flames yeah. but I'm like you know, that, that could that, I, I don't know if we trouble. got I don't know if we got like three minutes yeah, right. or if we're safe or what the yep. fuck the wind is gonna do like you know get up baby's crying I'm like COVID I thought that was it and now you know this George Floyd shit baby's crying pack everything what 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 what, what what's the most important shit you know, growing up, I, I thought I was like, grab the fucking jewel, like the jewelry or, or electronics. I was like, get the diapers, yep. get the fucking baby bottles. Baby, yeah. And, then, yep. and I was like, I don't give a fuck about anything else. And mm -hmm. um, it was this huge apartment complex that was being built. Um, lower income. I think, I don't know if it was good shit for the hood or the community or whatever, but it was enormous. Um, it was seven, eight stories. The whole fucking thing. You know, my room, my, my house was filling up with smoke. It was hot. Man, it was filling you up with smoke. Feel that? Yeah. Oh, no, the, the house right next to me was melted and had to be uh taken down. Holy shit. Melted? Yeah, it was it was over. Um and and um yeah. I, I took footage of it. We left. I came back to you know, called her dad or something, like where where are we gonna go at four AM or three AM or whatever? And um I come back and they stayed out there. I wanted to come back and like just, I just felt like I had to be there to protect my house or just, to, I just felt like I had to be there. You know, and, and it, my house was doing good there. I, I I had, you know, protesters and all my homies, they would come there for food or if they got fucking mm -hmm. maced or whatever, they could be in my backyard with the holes, you know. And I saw every once in a while, I'll just dip out. I, all I had to do was walk 50 feet out and I was in the middle of protests and Jeez. saw the, I saw the third uh, precinct go down. It's on my IG, Prof Gompo. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Um, so you can see that, uh, and it was, it's me footage, the fireworks going off across the third precinct. I don't know when in history of America that the people have overwhelmed a, a, a police department or the Capitol. Yeah. I mean, it's like, yeah, Jesus shit. Christ. It was wild. I don't think I any, think 1776. Shit. 
I think it might have been 1776. Yeah. It's so yeah, crazy. people were posting that like uh <clears throat> that the, the that photo of that iconic photo of this huge thing on fire, like you know, before it fell down, and they're like, hell yeah. And I'm like, oh, that feels different <laughs> for me. I was like, oh this uh, support they're it, like, let's like, go. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I had to leave. I, that that scared me, you know. <laughs> but your house, uh, you made it? I went back the next day, and there was live coals all over my yard still burning. Burning. Like on my yard furniture. And I'm like, oh, wow. So, I, I you know. Well, I, your house made it, but the one next to you melted. Like mm -hmm. that, do you understand how lucky you are actually are? To, if it melts next to you, it, you're, you're next. It was hot. You're next. All my neighbors were leaving at the same time, we're, you know, getting in the cars and shit. It was wild. Man. Yeah, it was a wild summer, man. It, I, I, I've been living my life like slowly progressing. I'm like an underground rapper, and I've never taken a step back. And I'm like, I always doing better and better. And I just thought that like, if you work hard, that's how life is gonna be. But man, yo, know, some fucked up shit could happen to you ten years from now. Life even if you're trying give a your fuck. Best. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You, I mean, who knows? We might go through another lockdown. Maybe mm -hmm. this year. Maybe ten years. Who knows? We don't know. Mm -hmm. That's why you got. That's why you have to fucking do it for yourself. You get one shot at this fucking thing here. Yeah, here. You know, and that's I, you know, I just keep it with the your your the people you love in person. Like, I, I got some shit. Fucking basically got canceled for some. I don't want to get in the weeds or whatever, but. And I tried, you know, what I want to do is be a better person. I, I desperately want equality for everybody, you know, um, but things are so confusing and nuanced and shit, you know, just like those riots, like there's people there for everything. So, you know, under the guise of being woke or not woke or mega or not, like it's, it's really confusing. All I know for sure is like the people I see in real life again, I can't wait to tell them I love them yep. and uh, just trying to have shared experiences in real life again. I think the huge problem was like, COVID really fucking made people angry. And then fucking, yeah, George Floyd was fucked up and it was, a, it was a perfect storm. I think we need some play basketball with people who look different from us and just share an experience again, recognize some humanity a little bit. Like, you know. Well, that's why I'm excited to get back on the road because I really feel like music, comedy, sports mm. brings everybody together mm -hmm. and, and for a good cause. If I'm rooting the same team on or if I'm – at a prof show, and we all get love him. Feeling like, good. Yeah, it doesn't Cooperating matter. Cooperating in person. And, you know, yeah. none of it, yes. Yeah. We're here for a common goal, and and basically it's to have fun and laugh and enjoy ourselves. Yeah, man. Um, have you ever played the Armory in Minneapolis? Mm -hmm. I went there. Um, I When I did uh, the House of Comedy, what was it, 2019, I went and saw uh, Wu Tang. We had the X Games in town. Mm, I played the X Games. You did? The one, that one? I don't like know. Like two maybe. years ago? They had like three in a row, so I don't know if it oh, okay. was the same one. Um, well, a buddy that uh, was a fan of the show was an engineer, so he was building all the ramps and shit. And he's like, come on. So he gave me all the back, you know, tour for that. And then I went and that night and saw Wu-Tang do uh, uh, the show at the Armory. And I had never been there before. It was fucking great, man. That's where, I think that's where the fucking Lakers played. It's an old, oh, old, Oh, really? Old, the mini old. Minnesota Lakers played there? Mm-hmm. No shit. And it was uh, just closed for like 40 years. Oh, And, and was. then just renovated it and oh, like put it together. I yeah. loved it. Oh, okay. So that's recent then they yeah. did that. Oh, okay. That's yeah. a dope spot. So now um, you're getting back out on the road too or what? I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to probably announce a tour soon. Okay. And I'll, I'll probably be touring this winter a lot, you know. You just did Red Rock? I've, I've done You've that. Done and that. I just did it. Okay. But I'm going to do um, Fiddler's. Something, some some yeah. big ass. It's gonna be with like the baby Jack Harlow and like oh, Sweetie man. and shit, like some radio show there. Um, that's coming up. Um, so yeah, I, I've sold out shows and stuff. Like, yeah, I've been re do yo. I have I've been doing really good too this year. So you know, all that horrible shit has been it's been a fucking roller coaster. Yeah, you know what I mean, I'm doing. I'm like, I got I got like twenty six AAA batteries in my drawer. I'm doing fine. You know what I mean? I got like. <laughs> I got like kitchen shears and shit. You know what I mean? That's, like, bro, you're just I'm like doing, me. I grew up with very little. Like, yeah. I remember when I went to get a car, the guy's like, we got this. The, the, the visor's like, I go, bro, you're upselling the wrong motherfucker. I didn't have air conditioning. Yeah. All right. Like, yeah. it, that is my, he's like, well, that's standard now. I'm like, mm -hmm. great. Then we're, I'm good. Yeah. Well, I don't need anything else. I don't need cruise control. I don't need all this shit. I drive the fucking car. Yeah. I'm the same way. I'm like, I got fresh socks. So I was always embarrassed. No, as a no, kid. I, I think if you have like twenty some AAA batteries, you're upper middle class. Yeah, you're set. 
Yeah. I always had holes in my socks. I still do. And I was embarrassed, mm -hmm. you know, and I would wear two pair, so it would cover the hole, but mm. then it would look like that one pair had a weak spot in it, you know what I mean? But I didn't mm. care. And then now I just make sure. It's one thing I promised myself when, because I've been, I've, been, uh, I've been on my own since 16. One thing I promised myself when I got older is I was always going to have motherfucking clean and fresh socks. Nothing feels good like a good fresh pair of socks. I fuck with that up. really heavy, dude. Really heavy. I'm for real on that. I wear the same shit all uh, over and over and over I'm again. I'm 90% hoodies and sweatshirts and mm -hmm. t-shirts, but um, there's nothing like putting your feet in a new pair. I, I once heard that Foo Fighters had on their rider fresh socks. Fresh socks. Lot Every of, show. No, that, that's not just them, bro. Oh, really? I would say 50% of all artists have like fresh socks or fresh t-shirts on yeah, their Yeah, I don't have t-shirts, but I love putting my feet in fresh socks and mm -hmm. then going on stage. It feels good. Mm-hmm. It feels good. Yeah, I was number three uh, Billboard charts as an independent artist. I just want to let you know that. <laughs> let them all know, man. I, I, I know when I, I know when it's hitting. I know when I'm doing well. When next door, I hear like the production team laughing and shit. Thanks, guys. Um. So what's next for you? You're gonna get out on the road, do a little bit of touring. I'm gonna fucking destroy, dude. There's a lot of things I can't say, but I am Good. lined the fuck up. Good. I'm Good lined up. Good for you, dude. Yeah. Let me ask you this: How's your mom? Like, uh, is is your son your mom's first grandchild, or do your sisters no, have kids? No, my sisters are older. You know okay. what I mean. So they got kids and shit. So how's your mom love you having a son? Like her only son has a son. How's she about that? She just, she's fucking about that. She is. She's, huh? she's so good, dude. She's. Yeah, she's the best with them. She's, and she's still local she and teacher. stuff to help you and see the kids and all that stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's a teacher. She right, she's she's perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. And you said she remarried? Mm -hmm. What what was your do you consider him a stepfather or is he your mom's second husband? Mm -hmm. uh, he's I love him. <laughs> <laughs> love you, love you, mom. How long has he love been you. with your mom? A long time. All right, he's, so he's good to your mom. He's good to my mom. That's all that matters. Mm -hmm. That's all that fucking matters. He's good mm -hmm. to your mom. That, yeah. th thank you. That That's a well put. It is yeah. all that matters, yeah. Yeah. that this guy is good to your mom. You you already had your dad. He was and they're doing 20 good. when you they're died, doing good so you again. don't need that. There's yeah. sometimes I hated him and shit, but I'll give him a hug right now. You know. Yeah. And do, what does your mom think of your career? Like, does she come see your shows and shit? Uh, every once in a while, you know. Does but she bump your shit? No. No? Um, I mean, I have a huge variety of songs, right? I have a lot of songs she doesn't like. You know what I mean? I yeah, got some sure. fucking, I got some fucked up shit. But then I got really, really good. I have an extreme variety of songs. Look up Flower Boy Live on on YouTube, and you'll watch me cry like a little bitch, and it's super emotional, very good writing. But then you look up Squad Goals, and I'm like, guns, yeah. hoes, well, you know, I'm just <laughs> That's like. That's the one we use. You know, so yeah. I'm like, when. When someone comes up to me and they're like, oh, I heard two songs of yours. I'm like, all right, who am I to you then? Like, right. what two songs have you heard? Mm -hmm. Because I, I cover a wide fucking gambit of shit. Like, I don't think anybody has range like I do, to tell you the truth, in the game. And can Does sing like this. Does your stepfather come see your shows? No, I don't think That'd be done. hilarious. If he's been to every one of them and you don't even know it, he's just in the back. <laughs> Binoculars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So what are your goals as a father? I want to know what your uh, goals are because you got a lot of shit to to break. You got to break that cycle. I'm not even worried about that no more. Yeah, I'm really, to tell the truth, like satisfied with who I am right now. Like, yeah, wait. you know, I, I greet people with respect and I like I walk with confidence. Like I'm the shit, um, and I fucking love my my little dude. And um. I mean, so far I've been there from him. It's been COVID and shit. I'm going to go on the road. That's going to suck. That's going to be new. Um, but I know I'm going to fucking run laps around my pops. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Unless I develop some crazy late stage mental illness and start fucking kicking the shit out of him or whatever. You know, but I got a dog for that. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> Done. Edit, edit that. You better edit that. No, 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 no. Keep that. Keep that. I like you better. That's like my number one joke. My fans know I'm. I love my dog. His name's Pilot. We got a we got a dog uh, merch line out. All right. <laughs> From the guy who didn't want to promote shit. I got too much. Whatever. Uh, have it come up naturally. I love it, dude. Um, thanks. Hey, I don't know if we're wrapping this up. I don't know what time it is, but I just want to say thanks for having me, man. Like, please. You're, you're a very you're likable, dude. Same. Mm -hmm. I'm glad we connected. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be hitting you up in Minneapolis. We'll go out tonight. Let's go out. Let me take you out in L.A. tonight. Um, I want to get blackout drunk and like just so you could think of me completely different than you do now. Great. I'm going to ruin all the goodwill I've great. built with you. That's fine. All we'll right. let everybody know. We'll put that on the IG story after, you know. 
Um, it's just the way you smile, man. You got it. Anybody ever tell you look like a look, you got a touch of like white Damon Wayans in you a little bit when mm. you smile? I've heard Eric Andre. Um, mm-hmm. You it just hit me when you smile. Brad Pitt. Like, look little- <laughs> Brad Pitt. I get, I get that. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, don't know. <laughs> I get that. All right. I told you uh, before we recorded, I ask everybody's. Uh, yeah, we'll wrap up so we can go hang out. I ask everybody their first time here advice they give. I, I never thought I don't to the six. I didn't want you to to your sixteen year old self. Now after what we talked about, because you said your dad burned the house down at fifteen. This is a pivotal age for you. Stop talking to him. Oh, so at sixteen, what are you going to tell that dude? I'm saying prof now is going back to sixteen year old prof and mm. saying, "Yo, I got some fucking advice for you. What is that? Who? What are you telling yourself at that age? It's, this isn't funny, but. It doesn't have to be. It's going to be worth it. It'll be worth it. Hang in there. Hang in there, buddy. Hey, hang in there, dog. You'll I, get there. It'll be worth it. That's what we say all the time. Like 90% of this shit is hanging in there, sticking around, staying in the fucking game. Yeah. It's worth it. Dude, thank you so much, man. This is fucking great. Hell yeah. Um, all right. You. Now, since you didn't promote anything, please plug anything for anything uh, you'd like. No. <laughs> Oh, man, this has been great. Thank you very much. For Appreciate real. it, dog. This has been great. Yeah. Uh, as always, RyanSickler.com, Ryan Sickler on all social media. We'll talk to you all next week.